Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Marathon Mondays with Mal. It's a beautiful Monday morning, like it always is here at the world headquarters of Co of Marathon Coach here in Coburg. I'm in the marketing office this morning, and a lot of work has been put in to uh, finally bring this to you today. That's right, the trailer episode. A lot of you have asked about it. Uh, before I get to that, I'm standing in front of kind of a really cool thing here in the marketing office. Uh, a lot of marketing happening here, and uh, as you can see, here's 1291's book, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So, um, the trailer. A lot of you have asked about it, and we finally have it to you, so a big thanks to uh, Todd for editing and doing, putting a lot of work into that. Um, a big thanks to the owners of 1291 who gave us the opportunity to really get in uh, close uh, and intimate with this trailer. Really excited about today's episode. We're going to throw it live to the pre-recorded um, portion today, and uh, I will be watching along with everyone else here on the marketing team your comments. So as you comment on it, uh, we might be answering it, which is kind of a cool concept that we're working with today. So uh, with no further ado, uh, let's throw it over to the uh, episode that you've all been waiting for, Coach 1291's trailer, The Stacker. It's a trailer story, so let's roll it and check it out. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Marathon Mondays with Mal. We've been waiting for it. That's right, 1291 right here, the trailer episode. The trailer is totally complete and done, and I think it's time that we bring in the owner of 1291 and now the matching trailer. Bernie? Hi. <laughs> Hi, Mal. Hi. Right. Thank you so much once again for taking the time to do this. There's so many people that are excited about this episode including myself, I think everyone knows that. 1291, a beautiful coach. We've seen it many times on Marathon Mondays throughout uh, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. Right. Now here it is, the matching trailer. What do you think? It came out great. It's almost actually a year to the day of when we ordered the trailer last April. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, I just thought about it. Wow, that's funny. Yes, and uh, it's been a year process. To get here, there's a lot of things involved, which I think a lot of people might want to do or maybe not. But let me just tell you my ideas. And if you like them, maybe you'll want to copy a little bit or it'll help you customize your own. The, so, and, and this is an extremely customized coach right. and it took you a long time to research, find the right manufacturers, find the right partners to partner with in building this, because uh, Marathon, is only a portion of that partnering. Correct. Uh, so, Bernie, take us through it. Show well, us the let's elements. Let's start with the sides. Okay. Just let's go with the sides first. Manufacturers nowadays don't want to give you a very thick sided trader as they used to. Why? Cheaper? Uh, of course. Yeah. Mass production, cheaper. A lot of the custom guys have gone away. The big one in Iowa now got bought by a conglomerate. Okay. A lot of things have changed over the years since the downturn. Sure. Just for a point of reference, uh, the inside lining of this trader is 0 .030. You're a metal guy. I am. The stock outside of a trader is 0 .040. None of that is thick enough for me. This is an upgraded side and it still isn't enough for me. It's basically built on 16 inch centers. And if you work this trailer, 
and you're carrying cargo up and down, what'll happen is after thousands of miles, you'll get waffling, which I don't want to see. Describe waffling to those uh, well, who might not know it. You'll see the sides. Uh, you know, they'll look like paper mache yeah, right. after a while. They're just too thin. They can't handle it. For another point of reference, a semi-trailer. Yes. Is like a point zero Very nine thin. O. Very, okay. Okay, yep. versus a point oh five O, which we have. What I did to combat that is, I went with 12 inch centers instead of 16 to strengthen it. And, and this will help it immensely. It's a very small upgrade, $600 upgrade when you're into this kind of money. You know, that's very, very minimal. Sure. So Bernie, we've, so you've got 12 inch, for the lack of a better term, would you call them dividers between? Well, or like, centers, like studs? Just, they're studs. Yeah. Yes. Instead of 16, right. so you're going to Everything not... Everything in the trailer, floor, ceiling, walls are all 12 inch. That's great. So you're going to avoid waffling. Right. So that the trailer will look good for many years. Many years. And people don't realize if you're loading something on the top lift, uh, we only carry a AC drive electric cart that weighs about 1,200 pounds. It really works that. If you're going to throw a car up there at 3,500 pounds, 4,000 pounds capacity, you're working it. Right. And that trailer's moving and it will affect it. Tell us about the stainless because the stainless is, a, is very unique yes. to this trailer. And one of the things that we've talked about in the preceding videos on the trailer and the, and the coach is how the coach and the trailer, the stainless right. is at the same height level. Yes, it's a lost art. There's a gentleman in Southern California by the name of Dan who uh, has since retired, but he still, he still dabbles in it some. I would uh, say this is dabbling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. He's done a couple like this for me. And what this is, is this is a number eight high polish stainless. Okay. And the trick of this is you have to have the dies and you have to bend it. You have to get the measurements from Prevo and then that's where the craftsmanship comes in. That's, it's, it's bending it so it matches the X3 Right. Corrugated sides. And for those of you who don't know, what he means is each one of these 10 feet sheets is put into a machine and they have a die, which for the lack of a better term is something that the, that the sheet metal is bent over. So Bernie, what is this called right here? Corrugated. And so the corrugated portion of the stainless, they put the die in there and they bend it exactly to match the coach. Right. You to the get... Prevo specification. Exactly. You know, you've got two sheets here of 10 feet each. And That's unique too, right, Bernie? Yeah, you've got 32 inches in tall. And so you, have, you need a belt line here for the seam. This is a belt line direct from Prevo, which matches the bus belt line. So the belt line literally runs from the, from the back of the trailer all the way to the front of the coach on the same level. Right. That's, a, that's attention to detail right there. And this here is all glued and taped with 3M material. What's the importance of that, Bernie? Well, because, you know, it would take, if you were to try and take this off right now, it would take a forklift with a chain and you might rip off the side behind it with it. Oh my goodness. That's how it bonds. And up here on this belt line, this is actually an old MCI bus belt line that I came up with, I found, and we needed it a little bit thicker because the top of this is riveted. You want it riveted, also you want sicka bonding on top of there so you don't get any water intrusions down in behind these sides, so you don't get any type of a D-lamp on it. Basically to finish it off, we match it on the sides with the Marathon rub rails. You can see that's a very nice finish. This is a nine and a half, only known to Marathon in width rub rail. It really sets it off beautiful. And uh, the wheels on the trailer, uh, I'm a firm believer in a little bit bigger rubber. This is a 17.5 inch wheel. Uh, you can run a larger tire and a more, uh, a higher speed rated tire. These tires that I have on here are rated at 75 miles an hour, whereas most 16 inch tires only rated at 60 miles an hour. So triple axle. Triple axle, we can gross 18,000 pounds. The way it sets right now, it's 8,100 pounds empty. And that's including the 400 pound aluminum 
gadget we got in there that we're going to show you. Absolutely. So Bernie, before we get to talking more about the hookups here, tell us about the, the diamond play here. Well, the diamond play. call it play, diamond play? Yeah, I kind of had this dreamed up long before I built the trader because I wanted to go with the bull nose, wedge, whatever you want to call it, front end on it instead of the flat front. Sure. A little more aerodynamic. I can get some cabinets in the front there, get an extra closet for my wife. Get a lot more room inside. Yes, and I don't have to have as much tongue in order to have a turning radius if I'm going to jackknife it into the side of the bus. Right. So this helped a lot. It was funny telling my wife and Andy a year ago about this rock guard being this high and I said we're going to ghost the front panels and they're like what in the world are you talking about? I had it figured out a long it time It looks ago. beautiful too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's move on here to hookups. Okay Bernie so tell us about the hookups. Okay. This is something I have absolutely no idea about. There's a lot going on here. All right. On a Prevo bus, all of your, your items run independently. Your stop, your, your clearance lights, your turn signals. All of that is run independently off of a circuit. Whereas in trailers, you know, they marry together the brakes and the uh, clearance lights and the turn signal. So you have to isolate them. So what this plug does right here is we're using two wires of a six-way plug. This gives us independent turn signals that run down the side of the trailer. Okay. And those blink with the bus, so everything looks nice in one row, and they run independently. Independently, and, and, can, and so whatever the bus does, the trailer does too. That's correct. Then we're gonna move to your normal seven-way plug right there, which sure. is your normal stuff on your seven-way trailer plug. And then this over here is our video camera. We're using four wires out of that seven-way plug for the video camera in the back. Absolutely. And we also rob one hole of it for the exterior lights underneath the trailer. That's right, because just like the bus has the right. ground effect lighting, you want the uh, the lights, what we call the pimp lights, if you will. I want to say that. I'll say it. Like, let's talk, let's talk about it. The pimp lights. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're in the industry here. Right. Uh, so the pimp lights run not only just under the bus, but under the... Yes, and it matches. It looks very nice. Sure. Very nice. And uh, basically, then you've got your breakaway here, which is your red cord. So if you do have a failure of some sort and uh, you break away from the hitch, you will continue to drag the trailer but the brakes will lock up. It won't get away from you and pass you going down the road. Okay, yeah. That's its yeah. main safety item. Okay, so Bernie, we've talked about kind of the guts of this trailer and uh, quite frankly, let's get to it. A lot of people are excited about it. Well, what is going on inside this trailer? Well, there's alternatives out there, okay? A lot of people now are coming out with this thing for a stacker because we're getting older. We don't want to get in there and have to tie down, we got no way out of the car window to crawl out. Right. And they're starting to cut holes in the side of the trailer. Why? Why? Well, I, I, I agree. Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> that so takes away can, from the structural integrity of the trailer, too, I would I assume. would think so. Yeah. I would think so. They're even cutting into portions in the front of it where your tie downs are, so you can do this. Oh. There is an alternative. This is what we've gone with. Now, you researched this for months. Yes, I did. The first time my wife saw it, she made me buy it because she's the one who has to crawl out of the car after we drive it in. Right. So she said, we are buying that. And I said, okay, done. So let's go inside and take a look. Okay. Bernie, let's see it. All right. And there it is. There it is. So Bernie, this system is very unique. I know you spent a lot of time researching it like we alluded to earlier. Why did you go with something like this trolley system? Well, in my opinion, the most, uh, one of the most important things in a stacker is the spread you have in between wheel wells. Okay. Most cars are all different. Most guys that are putting something in a stacker, it's a hot rod, it's an exotic, it's something, it's low, it's wide. This particular company, I have 81 and a half inches in width in between the wheel wells. Okay. Which is a lot. There's some companies out there that only offer you 79. You have no idea how tight it is. 
and then have to try and open your door, which you can't, and crawl out the yes, window. right. So the manufacturers cut a hole in the wall. So now you just fall out and hit the concrete. Gotcha. <laughs> but the alternative is a trolley system. As you can see, those two trolleys up there. Yes. They run on a track. This whole device only weighs 400 pounds. It's entirely aluminum. These two tracks fold down. So this whole thing it would flop flops. right back over. It's simple. Perfect. It takes seconds. It flops down. You run the two trolleys out, you drive your car up, put the front axle on one trolley, and you tie the wheel strap over the wheel. Sure. Outside. All done right here. Right here. Where we're standing. Right here. Okay. And then you pull it up with your winch. That's a 6,000 pound winch up there. You pull it up with the winch, get your rear axle underneath the rear trolley, wheel over it, pull it in, lock it down with four straps in the back. See these straps right yes. here? Yes. So it you're not having you're not having to climb in no. this trailer. No. And that's the main thing we're getting at here. Yes. You you secure it here. Yes. Roll it in with the winch. Yes. You trolley it in with the winch yes. and then you secure it right there. Correct. Correct. Wow. No more fighting trying to get a, a loop through a wheel through the mag, however, trying to catch a spring, trying to do something like that. Right here, the car is secured. You lock it down. It's a state-of-the-art system. I really like it. My wife loves it because she Why is that? The 50 Merc is chopped. Right. It's been chopped three and a half inches, so, so the window's low. about so big. Right. She can't get out of it. Yeah. So when she saw this, it was, you're getting that. And, and I totally agree. Absolutely. It's a great system. It will last a lifetime. As this trailer sits right now, it'll outlive your kid's lifetime if you were to give it to them. I build trailers for longevity. We only do about 20,000 miles a year. The paint, because of the application, the way we did it, wall thickness, all of that has a factor in longevity. The reason that this episode is so important to our viewers and to those researching on uh, the internet is because Marathon does not build trailers. Right. And you went out and you researched it and you, you brought it to Marathon. Pete Sutton designed the side of the paint right. uh, just like he did the bus. The paint department did it. Uh, you know, and that this is something very important for a lot of our viewers sure, to they, see. Yes, yes. They will do all that for you besides the other side of it, which is the service side. When you get it in, there was a lot of things that we had to do. That's a good point. To the front of it, the applications for all of the, the plugs, the lines, you know, and then also run the lights underneath it. Uh, there's a lot of little odds and ends that people have no idea until you get into it. You know, it's like building a house. Uh, you don't know what it costs until you get in there and put the drywall up. Right, okay? right. It's the same thing. So the Marathon Service Department assisted after you assisted brought the trailer after to after we brought it in, did the finishing touches on it, and uh, made it what it is. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what else is in this trailer that you custom ordered? You uh, kind of talked about it earlier with the cabinetry that you have up towards the front. Um, is that something that you wanted to see in this trailer that you didn't have in your yes, previous? Yes, it was. I was just kind of cramped in my other trailer. It was a flat nose trailer. I didn't have a lot of room to move around in. I know how much you loved that trailer, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Right, and uh, by doing this, we only picked up a couple of feet in length. Now uh, we're able to get us a, a wedge in there, and we also have some cabinets. But one thing I want to caution everybody, the manufacturers of these trailers set you up for failure when you start and you build one because they put cabinets up there. You have to be conscious of tongue weight. How much weight are you going to have up there in the front? Right. On a Prevo, you've got 2,000 pounds to deal with in tongue weight. If I was to load those cabinets up with tools and everything else, I'd be over. As the trader sets right now, it was 300 pounds empty. After the cabinets went in, we picked up 500 pounds. Wow. So we're 800 pounds right now. We're right at about 2,000 pounds on tongue weight with anything we put in here. And if we do get close, we have the option. You just turn the car around. Sure, sure. Get the motor back here. Put the weight at the rear. That's correct. Of the vehicle. Just, just an FYI. Okay. What else about this trailer uh, stands out that because you did so much research on it, what, what other details can you tell us about it? Because I know you're going to put 
a classic car in here. You're going right. to put your golf cart in here. Well, the paint is, I can't say enough about that. The bus came off the line last August. We got our trailer in September, okay? We stayed at our desert home in the winter time. We didn't want to come up here and set in the winter, right. which forced us into spring here. But we needed to be here when the paint was being applied so you can get the same look. Yes. You're gonna have shadows. I don't care how good anybody says they are. The Marathon people, the paint guys appreciate us because we're willing to sit here so they can match the paint. To get, to get it get done it right. right. Otherwise, it's guesswork. Yeah. Well, this has been an exciting, uh, I don't want to say journey, but definitely project. The commitment that you and Debbie and, of course, Chloe, your dog, you know, taking your, bringing your dog up here for a month. This, uh, the commitment that you guys as owners had to making this project go off so well and work so well and the, the teaming up with Marathon Service Department, uh, the, it's, it's great to see uh, that Marathon as a company and you guys as owners work together. It's been fun. As I said, we know everybody inside. It's not like we're coming to a foreign place. Right. We go to dinner with people. We interact. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a big family and uh, we're proud to wear the Marathon badge. I hope we can bring other people on board. If they, if they see us out there, you want to ask us any questions, uh, by all means, ask away. That's, that's a, a great way to send it off. I think that tells it right there. One of the most generous uh, owners that we've met, Bernie and Debbie, uh, spending all of this time with us to show all of you just how detailed you can get. 1291, there's never been an X3 more detailed uh, from design to engineering. This trailer, the matching, do we have a name for this trailer yet? No, we didn't, go ahead. Okay, uh, 1291, Two, or the Revenge of 1291B. <laughs> We're gonna come up with a name. Anyway, the commitment that Bernie and Debbie uh, gave to us, Marathon Mondays also needs to be called out. A big thank you to them. A big thank you to all of you for uh, all of your Thanks anticipation. Yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been fun for Bernie and I to do. And um, we're just excited to uh, to show it. This is a pre-recorded episode, so when it comes Thank out, you, Marathon. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. It's an outstanding. It's way, way above and beyond what anybody could expect. Well, and I see the relationship that you and Debbie have with so many people right. walking through this building. Not just that, but I came to your coach a couple days ago, and you had two couples of owners in there. Yeah, we look, were selling them. <laughs> showing up your coach. You know, yeah. talking about what kind of floor they should they upgrade. They had a little older coach and they wanted to change floors. And uh, they heard, uh, or actually Debbie told them what kind of floor we had and she wanted to see it. And now they're going to put it in there. Absolutely. Their coach, yeah. Well, on the West Coast, I can't think of a better a better person to get in front of the camera with me. So thank you so much. Thank you, Frank. Bernie, you're, you're a good man. Good thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, don't forget to be yourself and do good things. And uh, really enjoy getting out on the road because I know you're ready to get out there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>
right, everybody, we're back, and that was the trailer episode for 1291. I was just uh, looking over the book uh, of 1291. So uh, big thanks to everybody who watched. Big thanks to everybody who contributed. Uh, I know there was a there was a last minute uh, comment on there that I want Stan. I believe it was Stan. Mickey told me about. Uh, asked if uh, Bernie and Debbie were full timers and their coach. They're not. They actually have a beautiful home down in the desert. Um, but uh, when they are um, when they are uh, in their coach, they do spend some significant time in a uh, luxury RV park, uh, and they they get that thing on the road. They don't just uh, they don't just park it and sit in it. They get that thing on the road. Bernie's a driver, um, and so uh, yeah, they are not full timers, but they spend a lot of time in it. And uh, speaking of their commitment, when they came up here, uh, the commitment was to get it right. Uh, you know, the owner of 1302, he has said to me many times, Mal, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. Let's take the time to do it right. Let's do it right the first time. And that's what Bernie and Debbie did uh, with 1291 Stacker Trailer. Um, they committed to coming up here, uh, even though our weather was horrible and very significantly different, uh, they'll tell you that, than down there in the desert. Um, they spent the time. They brought their dog. They spent about a month up here uh, getting the trailer correct, getting it primed and ready, um, and then getting it painted correctly, and then taking the time with, the, with me and the marketing team here uh, to bring you guys this episode. Uh, and speaking of this episode, we have a bonus episode because we had footage of the trailer being prepared in the paint department. And so uh, Armand and I were down shooting a little bit, and we got a small episode that we're going to run probably this week for you as a bonus episode, and uh, it'll be attached to the 1291 trailer, and it shows our, our paint team. And there's a really cool shot that I want you guys to hear about. There's a shot of several different people from several different departments all working together. You've got the owners of the coach. You've got um, the head of the paint department, the the head of the service department. You've got uh, Pete, uh, Pete from the marketing team is there. Um, you've got all the guys from the paint team there. Everyone's working together uh, to make sure that 1291 Stacker Trailer was prepared. So don't, uh, don't miss that. It's a little bonus episode that will run later this week, I would assume, maybe even today. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for all the comments. Don't forget to email me, malw at marathoncoach.com. Uh, once again, and last time, big thanks to uh, Bernie and Debbie uh, for allowing us uh, to come in and see that trailer. I don't think a trailer has ever been, uh, the detail and the research that Bernie put into that trailer, it was a labor of love and now he gets to enjoy it. And so I know that uh, Bernie and Debbie are real thankful to the paint team here at Marathon for taking the time to make sure that it was exactly what they wanted. Um, and so big thanks to them. Uh, get on down the road, get in a marathon coach and enjoy uh, driving around this beautiful country. Um, wh wherever you are, whatever you can do, don't forget to be yourself and do good things. That's what I'm trying to do. Take care and uh, we'll see you on the bonus episode.